In the previous section, we've uh, discussed a method that searches for the best subset of predictors by fitting all the models corresponding to all possible combinations of the predictors. And we said that this, this method is quite inefficient because it involves fitting um, many models, even with a moderate number of uh, predictors. So stepwise methods um, are algorithms that try to um, uh, be more comp computationally efficient uh, by taking shortcuts in terms of the, this search for the best subset of predictors. And in stepwise, the model is built by steps. And at each step, we have to decide uh, what is the best predictor to add to the model, in the case of the forward stepwise selection, or what's the worst predictor in the model that needs to be removed. This corresponds to, to the backward stepwise selection. And despite the computational advantage, because we have to fit much fewer models, the stepwise methods don't, don't have uh, very good properties in terms of searching for the best model or searching for the correct model. Um, and for this reason, they are being used less and less in, uh, in applied research. In any case, we're going to describe this, uh, these methods, starting with backward stepwise selection. So suppose that we have a, a linear model with the potential P predictors. So the first step of backward selection is to fit the model with all the predictors. Okay? And then we assess the performance of, of that model. Usually we don't do this with cross-validation, so we usually use the training data, otherwise we are adding quite a bit of comp uh, uh, computation. So we assess this, the performance of this model. And in the second step, we're going to see how the model performs by removing uh, each predictor at a time. So we remove x1 uh, and we see how the model performs when removing x1 and then we put x1 back and remove x2 and see the performance and put x2 back and remove x3 uh, and so on until I removed all the, 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 the covariates. Okay? And suppose that the removing x2 uh, has the better performance. So this is my second step now. So I have now this model and now I'll repeat uh, the similar idea, but now with X2 removed, I fit all the models. Now removing X1, I put X1 back, I remove X3, I put X3 back, remove X4 and so on. Okay. Um, and I'll stop when removing any predictor gives me a, a worse performance than keeping the predictor in, in, in the model or keeping any of the predictors in the model. Okay, and uh, as, as always, we can use different measures to assess, uh, to compare the, the, the performance. We can use the AIC, BIC, uh, the R square, or the, the mean square error. Um, many statistical packages use p value, so it's, it, it, the, the procedure starts by fitting all the model, all the, the variables or all the predictors, see the predictor with the highest p value uh, as a proxy of the, the worst performance predictor removes that predictor, refits the model with the, the, the P minus one predictors, checks the p-values, remove the worst p-values and so on until, for example, all the p-values are significant. Okay, so if we go back to the uh, example using the FAT data set, where we had uh, quite a few predictors for, or for body fat given by the, the, the variable uh, Brozek, you can see in the output of the reg subset function that always also can fit stepwise um, in this in this case with the method equals to backward. So we have to read the output from from bottom to the top. So the first model uh, includes all the predictors, and I've added an extra column here with uh, the malus C or the AIC. As I told you before, this this measure is very similar to the AIC. In the case of the Gaussian distribution, it's actually the same. So from this uh, model with 14 variables, I evaluate what happens when I remove each one of the other variables, and I see that the variable that has worse performance is the new variable. That one is removed, and I refit the model with uh, all the variables except uh, new, get the performance. Next step is trying to remove each one of the other variables and now it is uh, adipose that seems to uh, really uh, not performing very well so it jumps out of the model and I'll, in, in this case uh, uh, reg subset actually doesn't stop it goes on until removing 
uh, or having just one variable in the, in the in the model okay so i have all these steps until uh, having having just one variable in the model and you can see in your in the in the c malo statistics that the statistics decreases 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 up to eight predictors and then starts to increase so according to this this criteria this would be the model with eight predictors would be uh, the the model selected by backward selection okay so the model including age weight uh, neck uh, abdomen hip thigh and forearm and wrist so i could now fit uh, the linear model for brozek using those eight predictors and i have here the coefficients okay so this is the idea of backward stepwise start with uh, everything in the model and remove one variable at a time until i have uh, a model that is uh, not improving anymore so in forward stepwise the idea is uh, it's now the, the other way around so we start by putting one variable at a time in the model so we start by fitting all the models with one predictor so the model with x1 another model x2 and so on and from all these models we select the best one let's suppose that that this is the one that is selected with the, the, the lowest AIC or the lowest uh, uh, MALOC uh, or the lowest BIC, again, depending on the criteria. And once that variable is in the model, the X2 is in the model, I try refitting now all the, the, the models with X2 and an extra variable. So X2 and X1, X2 and X3, X2, X, X4, X2, X, X5, and so on. Suppose that now the X, X5 um, uh, is the one that adds more to to the model once x2 is already in the in the model okay now i would, I would go on by uh, searching what's the the other uh, uh, predictor that can add something to to this model that already includes x2 and x5 and i would stop when no other predictors predictors improve the model okay so using the reg subset in the fat data set the syntax is very similar uh, to to the syntax before but now the method is forward uh, and again, I'm going to use the Malos C statistics, and now I'll read, I'll read the the matrix from the top to bottom. So in the first step, uh, the the algorithm fitted all the linear models with each one of these um, uh, predictors at the time, and Abdom was the one with best performance. So this one stays in the model, and now uh, we'll we'll uh, look for. Uh, all the models with abdom and each one of the other ones and now i see that uh, abdom and weight have the better performance now these two are are going to, to be uh, to stay in the model and notice that once they enter the model they stay um, for all the steps because they are already there okay and again i have here the the performance being measured by uh, the malo c and the one with the lowest uh, um, uh, Malosi statistics is again the one with uh, eight um, eight uh, predictors, which are the same ones as the um, the backward stepwise, and this is basically how we implement two methods. Notice that in this case, the two methods gave the same uh, the same uh, subset of of covariates, so eight predictors and the same eight predictors. We are, we've used. Uh, the same uh, the same criteria obviously to, to, to compare these two but the matrix is slightly different in both methods and it's not necessary that they'll give you the same results like you can there are there are some situations where uh, forward selection will uh, choose a subset of covariates or a subset of predictors and backward will select a different one but most of the time they tend to be they, they tend to be uh, 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 they tend to agree in the the, the variable selected um, there are some theoretical reasons for backward being uh, preferred to forward stepwise. So if you can implement backwards, uh, uh, it's better than, than, than using forward stepwise. But if you have a large number of, um, of predictors to start with, and we're not a very large N, you can imagine that that's going to be quite like right? it's going to create a very unstable model if you have a large number of predictors or even if you have more predictors than observations you you won't be able to fit the full the full model to start with the backwards so forward stepwise would have would be the, the choice 